Our next speaker is known for roles in many films, including Witness for the Prosecution, Funny Face, and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. It is my honor to introduce to you, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it's a thrill to be here. This is the first time. I certainly hope not the last. And when it comes to first, I only met Marilyn once, but it was unforgettable, and I will get to that. But in spite of the fact that it was only once, I felt a very strong connection to that beautiful, beautiful creature God put on this earth. Uh, first of all, we were both Gemini. She's uh, June 1st and I'm May 30th. So there was kind of a, a tie there. Um, she had a very dear friend, a hairdresser, named Sylvia Barnard. And Sylvia is the one that made her a blonde. And Sylvia used to do my hair on occasion. She made me kind of a little blonder than I really was. And uh, she was the sister of my forever assistant. And we'd get together and the girls would talk and it would always be Marilyn, 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 and finally, would you just shut up about Marilyn? <laughs> and she never did and she was marvelous and they were friends forever and ever and ever. Another connection that sort of came into being was that Debbie Reynolds, who was the founder of the Thalian, uh, best friend, not just my sister in charity, but my, my sister in, uh, my chosen sister in life. And she, as you know, had the smarts, the willpower, and above all, the heart to buy beautiful things from the sets of Hollywood and all of the movies that were made. She set, spent every dollar she ever made on, she spent every dollar one of her husbands didn't screw her out, but let's put it that way. But, but um, she spent everything that she ever made on buying memorabilia. And wasn't that smart of her? Because when you stop and think of that fabulous, iconic subway dress of Billy Trevia's, by the way, that's another connection. Billy Trevia did my wedding gown. So we're connected in a lot of ways. And that iconic dress that may have caused Marilyn a lot of misery because I think that Joe DiMaggio started to get really pissed about what was happening with her and, and her connection to people and, and accepting them. That dress, and by the way, Marilyn is back in Palm Springs, thank God, with everybody looking up her skirt all the time. <laughs> that huge statue of her is, is in front of the museum. That dress that caused Marilyn misery made over $5 million for Debbie Reynolds. She had it and sold it, and isn't that phenomenal? And Another dress that she had was from uh, River of No Return, which you, there you are, you mentioned the wonderful uh, producer, Stan Stanley Rubin, and uh, his lovely wife, Kathleen Hughes, was kind of a predecessor of the beautiful blonde that Marilyn represented for the rest of her years. Uh, Marilyn had great big lovely bosoms and she was blonde and pretty and she was under contract to Universal, I believe. And then when I was speaking about the Thalians and, and Debbie was the founding member of that, when the organization first got started, I have to tell you, it was started by actors who got tired of being called pot drinking, uh, hot smoking idiots that had nothing to contribute to the world. And they said, you know, we get together and hang around the piano and sing and have drinks and laugh. Why don't we put a show together and we will send, you know, out two other blonde bombshells 
Mamie Van Dorn, and Jane Mansfield. Now you want to talk about cornering the braziers of the world. <laughs> Can you imagine these two tootsies go out to look for where the Thalian money is going to go? They went out to find a charity. They came back to the next meeting saying, well, all the major charities have been taken. The diseases have been taken. <laughs> and they found a gentleman that dealt with emotionally disturbed children. And he described an emotionally disturbed child like a rotting apple in a barrel. And the whole barrel will be infected if you don't take it out and cut out the rot. And that's exactly what we did for a lot of years. And then 18 years later, we built the Thalians Community Mental Health Center. And I have to thank all of the stars, like George, and certainly my darling Terry for coming up for the Thalians and performing or, or being there and doing whatever it took. Uh, and so Debbie is also up there with Marilyn, smiling down on all of us for doing what we do. Um, I have to tell you, I'll just tell you about this in closing. The one time that I did get to meet Marilyn Monroe, I was in Las Vegas because I had been on location with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sandy Davis, Peter Lawford, the Crosby Boys, and oh boy, and I was the leading lady. Ooh, what fun I had on that one. Anyway, we were in Las Vegas because Dean Martin's birthday was on this particular occasion, and Frank was having a great big huge party for him. But they were all performing. The deal was that while we were on location in Kanab, Utah, they would each play a week. And so we went down for the opening and the closing and the opening and the closing. And the birthday party was taking place. I have to tell you, I had John Wayne sitting on one side of me, Milton Berle on the other, directly across the table from me, big, long banquet table was the beautiful Elizabeth Taylor, who was at the prime of her beauty, then married to that schmuck, <laughs> Eddie Fisher. <laughs> and, well, I say that because Debbie told me a lot. <laughs> and uh, I was in, in a little cotton something or other because I thought, Kanab, Utah, I don't need anything dressy. And everybody is bejeweled and bedecked and they're just gorgeous. Well, in from the back of the main room, the main showroom at the Sands Hotel, comes Frank Sinatra with Marilyn on his arm. Now, I have to tell you, the Gabors knew how to light up a room. <laughs> Marilyn walked in, and it's as if every cleat light and spotlight in the world was shining on her. And there wasn't anything shining on her. It's just she shone. And she had on a, a glimmery white beaded dress, and of course the inevitable fox stole. And she just radiated, and she was so dear, and so wonderful. And even though I only met her once and fed, felt so connected to her, I want to thank every speaker today for giving me that much more insight into Marilyn so that I feel even more connected to her. But I thank each and every one of you for giving a damn about her and for keeping this lovely organization of people who love Marilyn going. And go on for another hundred years, will you? And all I can do is say thank you and may God smile on all of you. I don't know about all of you, but I think this has been an amazing Service this year. Wow. Yeah,